Welcome to the R video tutorial on QuantMod Part 2. This time we're going to learn how to obtain results using the QuantMod package. Okay, so if you've watched the last video, Part 1, which isn't labeled Part 1, but anyway, Part 1, you will quickly see that you can learn how to install the package QuantMod and you can load the library, which is what we're going to do. I have a fresh R session here. So I'm going to load the QuantMod library. I've already installed it. So now that I've loaded it, it's loaded everything I need to do. It gives me this error that it always does. And it's not an error. It's actually a warning. And it's about this auto assign here. So we don't want it to auto assign. We want to write our stock, which happens to be AAPL, which is Apple, into a variable called stock1. So we'll run this real quick. So we read it in. It's uh, running out to Yahoo right now to grab this data. And it's already pulled it in. The next thing I want to do is I want to plot this data. So because we did that last time in this quick review, and you can see this is what Apple looks like since January 3rd, 2007. And today is uh, July 3rd. Uh, the data on here says July 2nd because today is not done in terms of a trading day. All right, so let's actually learn how to get some returns out of this thing. Now, there's what, different ways to get returns. So let's uh, see, get returns. So we can get daily returns. So we can put in here daily. And you can see it pops up the tooltip so it can help us. So we want to do daily return. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the same thing we had up here before. So I'm going to keep and copy and paste this because copy and paste is a wonderful thing if I can get it to work get my fingers to work here I have fat finger syndrome and bingo so it's in there and this will return the daily returns now we actually want to write this into a variable so we might call this uh, stock one and if you notice I typed over something uh, so daily return but I don't want to write over stock one I want to call this stock one maybe dot day. So I know that it's the daily returns on this. So if I run this, it calculated a new variable over here. You see it is in our global environment. And what we can do is plot this. So I'm just going to copy this right here. And we'll paste it down here. Now we probably should look at stock day to see what it looks like just so we're aware. So it has returns and it says daily returns and uh, this is on the close. Notice the first one is zero because in a sense that doesn't have anything to difference against. But all of these are kind of small numbers because these are actually daily returns not uh, monthly or anything like that which ends up being bigger. So you can actually plot these and see what you get. So, oh, I forgot to put in here my new data set. So don't forget to do that. So here it's just the whole data set. So I'm going to do stock one and dot day and paste that in. And now when I plot this, I'll get a different picture. And you can see this is the daily returns. This looks very different than your other data because it's actually the subtraction of the two stock prices day after day divided by the previous day. So uh, this is very different and you need to get used to this. So I'm assuming you have some idea what returns are before we go too far here. So this is daily returns. You can also do other returns as well that are kind of useful to have around. So for example, uh, we can get weekly returns. Maybe we invest on a weekly basis. So we can do week and I think it's weekly return, we can find out real quick by just running this. And if it blows up, we can go look it up. So I'm going to run this real quick. And it worked. Uh, now I can plot this again down here. And my plot looks like this. So it's a little bit different. Uh, the time scale is shifted. Now we're working on weeks instead of days. We can also change this to monthly if we wanted to. And you can get yearly as well or quarterly for those of you who, who like to do quarterly. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is month. Uh, and then here you just put in monthly return. If I can spell. 
and change it down here to month as well, and we can see what comes out. Okay, so if I run this, I'm going to get a different picture that's going to be a little more coarse. And you can see here how the returns fluctuate by month. This is the monthly return. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It automatically does all the aggregation for you over across the weeks, and it uses the arithmetic average. And there are some options where you can go in and put a geometric average in if you wish. Uh, to me, this is just fine for what I'm working with and for what most people are working with. Uh, the other thing that's really unique about uh, returns is you can actually look at a histogram of these. So I'm going to look at a histogram of my stock one month and I can see lots of information about my returns. So for example, in my histogram, I can see here that most of the returns seem to be or more likely to be above zero than to be negative. And that's a good thing because if they're negative, I'm losing money and I don't like losing money. Okay, so this gives us a, a little bit of a chance to do this, and we can also, if we wanted to, we could get a summary of this, which we've used before in a previous video. So just be aware that you can go back and look at previous videos that will show you how to do various uh, things. And the summaries show up down here, so just keep that in mind. You might have to stretch your window open just a little bit here. So. Here it says the index we don't really care about. Those are the dates. It's just the beginning and the end. But we're interested in the return. So the minimum return was a negative. It uh, looks about like 0.32. And you can think of this as in percent. And the max is a 23. And the mean is above zero. And the median is above zero. Which means, especially the median, you know, half the time you're going to be above about 2%. All right, so this gives us the basic tools to be able to get returns out of QuantMod, and now we can go on to the next video.